Well, good morning, everyone who is watching at home. We are very glad to present our worship service to you this morning. We're glad to be able to still be able to sing praises to our God and, uh, and uh, have our thoughts and our message presented to us. So we're going to do that in just a moment. But if you will, let's open up with a prayer. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for watching over us and keeping us and keeping us safe uh, through this pandemic. Father, we ask that you uh, continue to be with uh, all of those in our nation and the world who are dealing with this crisis at this time. Lord, we ask that you uh, continue to provide those who are in leadership positions with the capabilities to make uh, the correct decisions and allow this to pass as quickly as possible, Father. But uh, at this time, we want to focus on uh, you and who you are and what you've done for us, Father, and that no matter uh, what's going on around us, we can count on you to be faithful and to give us hope and peace and comfort when we need it, Father. So we ask that you help us to uh, give the glory and honor and praise that's due to your name at this time uh, as we lift you up in song. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, so if you will, let's go ahead and sing. Holy Lord, most holy Lord, you alone are worthy of my praise. O holy Lord, most holy Lord, with all of my heart I sing. Great are you, Lord, worthy of praise. Holy and true, great are you, Lord, most holy Lord. Holy Lord, most holy Lord, you alone are worthy of my praise. O oh, holy Lord, most holy Lord, with all of my heart I sing. Great are you, Lord, worthy of praise, holy and true. Great are you, Lord, most holy Lord. Great are you, Lord, worthy of all of my praise, holy and true. Great are you, Lord, most holy Lord. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I need thee every hour in joy or pain. Come quickly and abide, or life is vain. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. We'll sing this next song, and then we will invite our brother David to speak to us. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest, and without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart, Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my right 
righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. So teach my song to rise to you. When temptations come my way, and when I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. And when I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. You're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Well, thank you, Colin, for our song service. If you'll bow with me for a moment, we'll have a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you right now asking that you'll bless this time as we gather here on the first day of the week as we celebrate the, your son's uh, death and burial and resurrection. Father, we ask that you'll be with us during this time. Father, we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, now, last week, as we, were, uh, as we were online, I had grandkids that were watching, and, uh, and uh, a couple of them saw me on their television screens and ran up and, and uh, waved and asked how come I didn't say hi to them back. And, uh, and so I just wanted this week, I want to make sure I say uh, hi to Cora and hi to Emsley and hi to Graham. And, uh, and so, uh, so there you go, Papa and, and Pa Bear, they call me two different things, are, are, are uh, I, I see you and I, I, I love you uh, in that. Now, a couple of other things in, uh, in, in our housekeeping mode that we're doing, I want to say thank you for your response. Uh, uh, last week, uh, uh, we were up around a little less than 500 views. Uh, that means when this is all over and that we come back, if we took it about 2.5 households per view uh, and 500 views, that means we would have about 1,250 people here. So you may want to come early to get a good seat uh, in that. And I would love to hold you to that. Uh, also, I want to say thank you for uh, your generosity and your giving and keeping the works of the congregation alive here. We've got so many important things, and, and, uh, and I want to thank our children's ministry for, for you being able to access stuff uh, for your kids, and, and that's available for you again this week. And, uh, and so taking a look at that. Now, the big difference between last week and this week uh, is, is that early last week, uh, the county judge uh, put Houston, brought Houston in line with all the other Texas big cities uh, and put us in a shelter in place. And so, uh, uh, and, and so we're sort of kind of enforced in being home uh, in all that. So be careful, wash your hands a lot, uh, and, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get back to life at least as we sort of knew it, uh, in that, which is what I want to talk about. We're in, we're in, the, in the book of Matthew, and, and I've, I'm calling this series Living in the New Normal. And, uh, and I want to talk today specifically about how to handle a broken heart in the new normal and, and how to adjust and everything that goes along with that and what we're having to get used to. And, and here's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that this year 
isn't going to turn out like we wanted it to turn out. There's all kinds of things that have changed uh, just within the past two or three weeks in this year. And let me tell you what I mean. Let me just talk about Westbury. Because at Westbury Church of Christ, we've got high school seniors. They normally sit over here. And we've got high school seniors and college seniors. We've got, but mostly I'm, talk, I'm thinking about high school seniors who aren't going to do, aren't going to get to do everything that high school seniors get to do this time of the year. They're not going to get to go to proms and go on senior trips and, and have special days where they get together and, and, uh, and have special ceremonies and services. We have one at Westbury Christian that happens here in the auditorium, uh, and, uh, and we're not going to be able to do that this year. I don't even know about graduation and, and what's there for that, and, and that's broken some hearts. This is a rite of passage in there. Uh, one of our, uh, in our colleges, they're putting back graduations to August. And, and, uh, and so there's some things about it that are, that, that are, uh, that, that, that are different and, and things that are, that are normal that you're looking forward to that you're not going to get to do. Uh, it, we've got members of this congregation in nursing homes that are in total lockdown. And here's what that means. You can't go see them. Even if you're their family members, you can't go see them. And they can't come out of their rooms. They bring them their food, and, and they're stuck. They are isolated in their rooms. And, uh, and this isn't how they expected to finish the last few years of their life. And we've got folks here at Westbury that are in the food service industry. And they're really hurting right now because it's hard to make a living if you can't serve food. You, you know, it's kind of hard to, if, if most of your living is based on the tips from your customers and you're not allowed to have customers, then how in the world, how in the world are you going to be able to make a living? You can't pay the bills if you did that. And we've got educators. We've got educators that, that have been told to stay home from school and they're trying to figure out how to teach their students in a meaningful way online. Now listen, it's difficult enough to reach a kid when you have them there in the classroom when you can, when you can look them in the eye and, and interact with them. But you take, them out of that, you take that out of the equation and you've got no idea if the student or the, and the parent or the parents are going to comply with the teacher. And uh, I, heard of a, I heard of a student this week who told uh, one of their teachers that they're not going to be able to learn online because their father wants them to come to work with them because their family needs the money. And so forget about teaching that student online. Now, let me tell you something. Nothing breaks an educator's heart like talent that goes unrealized. And then we've got our first responders. We've got our police, uh, our policemen, our police women. We've got our nurses. We've got our physicians that are up there every single day treating folks that are coming in, looking at them face to face, dealing with the folks that, that live life on a margin and, uh, and, and hoping and praying that they make it through their shift without being, without, without being infected with, with, with this virus. And that's got to be heartbreaking in there. And so we've got a lot of broken hearts to deal with, not in the traditional sense. You know, the traditional sense of a broken heart is when you get dumped. I, I remember getting dumped first time I got dumped sixth grade, a girl named Melissa. Uh, how bad, how traumatic was it? I still remember her name. I could call her last name, except she may somehow tune into this uh, on that. And my father said it was puppy love. Uh, and, uh, and I'm going to tell you what, it may have been puppy love. This dog took it hard uh, in that. And the truth is that life is hard. And as we grow older, the hurts get a little bit harder. And an interesting thing about God's word is that it never tries to explain suffering. But it does teach us how to handle when the new normal comes into effect. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 4, Blessed or happy are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So how can I be comforted? How can I be blessed? How can I be happy when the one thing I've been looking forward to for my whole life gets taken away from me? How can I be comforted? How can I be blessed when the parent I love, I can't go see because they're isolated in a lockdown room at a nursing home? How can I be comforted? How can I be blessed when I don't know how I'm going to make my pay my bills because I can't work in the industry, the only industry that I know how to work in that I can pay my bills in. 
How can I be blessed when I watch the news at night and I see that the, that the coronavirus cases, they're not just doubling, they're exploding all over the place and people are getting sick and some of them are dying. So how can I be happy when normal will never be the same again? Here's how. By getting our comfort from God. So today I want to tell you how to get your comfort from God. How to experience God comfort. Number one is this. To realize that God is with me. Now when we are in crisis, when we're in turmoil, we forget where God is. We think God's distant or we think God doesn't care. But the reality is God's right where he always is. Psalm chapter 34 verse 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. So that means God's with us when everything else is falling apart. Now I want you to remember three things when we're in this situation. Number one, God is aware. Book of Job says, you keep a close watch on all my paths. That means God watches us. Nothing escapes God's eye. The Bible says every tear you've ever cried is numbered. Somebody says, nobody knows what I'm going through right now. Oh, God knows. And then the second thing is that God cares. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. You see, you have a heavenly father who really does care. Our pain matters to God. We can talk to him about the things that hurt us. And then number three is that God wants to help us out. The Bible says, let us approach God with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So God not only offers us awareness, but he offers us assistance. God not only cares about our hurt, but he wants to help us with our hurt. God doesn't just write us a little note. He doesn't just write us a little card. This says, look, hey, I'm thinking about you in this time. Now, he uses the word comfort there. Let me, let me talk about the word comfort. The word comfort is an old English word, confortus, C-O-N-F-O-R-T-U-S, confortus. And, and that word fort that's in the middle of there, anytime you see that, I want you to understand that it comes from a place of strength. It, it, in fact, comfortus is an old English word that literally means with strength. God says, if you'll put your faith in me, I will strengthen you and give you comfort. Now, some people grow through their pain, and some people get stuck in their pain. Some people go on through their hurt, and some people get stuck in their hurt. Why? Because they never take the second step. Step one is to realize God's with me. It's to realize God cares. It's to realize God's aware. It's to realize that God wants to help. Now, if that's all, I, I would be a poor preacher if I left it right there. But how do we get out of the pain and get on with life in a post-normal situation? Well, here's it is, number two, is release the hurt, to let it go. You say, how do I let it go? How do I let it go when everything around me is spinning out of control? How about this? How about let's stop focusing on what we've lost and start focusing on what's left? Isaiah 43, 18, do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing, says the Lord. See, God says what's past is past, and we've got to let it go. The past cannot hurt us anymore. You see, some of us are letting people and letting things from the past continue to hurt us. And that's just not smart. You see, they can't hurt us unless we let them. Now, one of the things they're telling us to do is to not get in big crowds. That's good advice. You say, well, I'm, I'm going to do my own thing. No, that's not good advice. You, you see, if you want to stay healthy, if you want to stay well, listen to them. You, know, you say, I realize God's with me. I realize I need to release the past. You see, here are the options we can do with the hurt that we have from the past. Number one is we can repress it. Repress it. That's squish it down. That's swallow it. That's pretend it's not there. Now, here's the problem with that. Every time we swallow those feelings, our stomach keeps score. Now, you, that's, that's, why, that's why there's a whole section of the drugstore that is, that, that'll sell you things like Maalox and, and Tums and, and, and Omeprazole. That's why those things are there, because we've got our stomachs making lots of acid from the fact that we swallow a bunch of stuff. If we pretend it doesn't exist and hold it in, that's not healthy. 
Uh, you know, I, I mean, walking wounded people all the time who have never let go of their hurt. They just keep pushing it down. The second thing we can do is rehearse it. That means go over it in our mind. That, and we could torture ourselves by replaying the same thing over and over. And God says, don't let the past consume us. There's a big difference between mourning and moaning. Mourning is legitimate. Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn, for I will comfort them. Number three is we can resent it. We can resent this thing. We can resent this virus that's going around. Well, don't resent it. When somebody or something has hurt us, that when the pain is caused by somebody else, sometimes we fantasize about how we can get back at them. Sometimes we fantasize how we can, we're going to go out of a way to make our, their lives miserable. Well, I want you to know that when you do that, it just eats you up. It is a cancer that kills you from the inside. It destroys us. Or the fourth thing we can do, and this is the right thing to do, is release it. Release the hurt to God. You know, there's a whole lot of our lives that we can't control. And we're in one of those times where we can't control them. And so if we can't control it, if you can't control it, do something about it. If you can't control it, release it. Romans 12, 19, dear friends, never avenge yourselves. Leave that to God, for he has said he will repay those who deserve it. I'm glad that verse is in the Bible. So if you want to let God, if you want to let go of your hurt, then you got to let God settle the score. If somebody has gone out of their way to make your life miserable, let God handle it. Because who's going to do a better job at getting even, you or God? I think God will. Psalm 10, 14 says, but you, O God, do see the hurt the grief and the pain, and you will call that person into judgment and avenge the helpless and the victim. So leave it in God's hands. You be you, let God be God, and let God fight your battles. God's going to fight your battles a lot better than you'll fight your battles. So what do you do with the anger inside of you? Well, you turn that into constructive use. You use that energy to help other people. There are a lot of organizations out there Probably the biggest one I can think of is the Mothers Against Drunk Driving. That was somebody that took a legitimate anger, a legitimate hurt, somebody that was taken from a family by somebody that was driving drunk and turned that into a force for good. They didn't take vengeance into their own hands. They turned it into something that was good. And then the third thing that we can do when the new normal overwhelms us and breaks our heart is that we could rely on God's resources. That'll comfort us. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. How in the world am I going to be happy in the midst of trials and tragedy? Well, receive God's comfort. And let me just tell you right now, quickly, God uses three things to comfort us. Number one, God uses his word. So a great thing to do during this time when we are sheltering in place and we don't, and we've got a lot of time on our hands outside of playing with our kids and all that kind of stuff. How about filling your mind with scripture? In Psalm 119, 25 and 52, David said, I am completely discouraged. Revive me by your word. Your word has been my comfort. Now, here's the thing. You know, you can read through all kinds of translations of the Bible. So that big one that your grandparents had that scared you to death, you don't have to read that one anymore. Okay? You, you, you don't have to do that. I would encourage you to read the book of Psalms. Highlight the verses that are comforting. And you'll have them when you're troubled about what's going on. And you need to know what God says to you. It's because right now, you're living in a time of fear. And a lot of hurt and a lot of pain. And you're with us this morning and you're saying, All right, I need a word from God. Does God have a word for me? And the answer is yes, he does have a word. And the word is, this all matters to God. So look to God's word, become a student of his book. So God uses God's word to comfort us. Let me tell you what else God uses. God uses God's people because we need each other. Now, see, we were made to be together. Thing that I, I was encouraged a lot when I read your comments on Facebook this week because y'all are sick of having online church services. So am I. Yeah, you know, I, I, I love looking out and seeing a full building. Uh, in this, and not empty pews. So the, the, the process, the, 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 the trick then is, okay, how do, we, how do we isolate physically, but, but be close, but, but, but connect spiritually? And, and, uh, and so it's to understand that in this time of enforced isolation, 
we still need each other to make it. I still need you. I need you more than ever. You, you know, there are folks in this congregation that we don't have any family. We, we've got no family. And if we've got no family, if you've got no family in Houston, I'm going to tell you something right now. Let me make you an offer right now. We will be your family. Let us be your family. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. The God of all comfort comforts us in our troubles, in all our troubles, so that we can comfort others with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. So right now, if you're scared and you're hurt, you're not alone. And then the third thing God brings us together with and comforts us with is his Holy Spirit. And this is the greatest comfort of all. The Holy Spirit is the, th is the one thing that can connect us spiritually when we are separated physically. Because it's the Holy Spirit, God himself wants to be your friend. 2,000 years ago, God walked around on earth in a body and said to his disciples, I'm going to go back to heaven, but, but when I head back, I'm going to send my spirit, the Holy Spirit down here so that I can be with you and in you. And Jesus came in another form, and the Holy Spirit, when you were baptized, was brought into your life, and one of the roles of the Holy Spirit was to be your comforter, that Jesus put his spirit in our lives. I may not feel the Holy Spirit in my life all the time, but the Holy Spirit is there all the time. The Holy Spirit helps me out. And the Holy Spirit does not come in our lives to make us some sort of religious freak or religious fanatic or scare us. But the Holy Spirit comes in our lives to comfort us and to help us become what God wants us to become. You do not need to be afraid of that. I, I didn't feel any different the day I was baptized into Christ. I didn't feel any different when I received the Holy Spirit. I've told this story before about a, a, a young lady I baptized was about six foot three inches tall. And she asked me what the Holy Spirit felt like the day I, when, when she would get baptized. And I said, okay, that, you tell me. And when I baptized her, um, you know, when, that, that, when I got her all the way down in the water, her eyes opened up real big. You guys remember this story? Her eyes opened up real big. And, uh, and, and I thought, okay, there's a story in here. So I got her up out of the water real quick. And, uh, and I said to her, okay, tell me what you, what you got. What did you say? She said, you bumped my head on the step and it hurt. Uh, and that so much for the Holy Spirit. Uh, and there, that was a knock on the head. You know, all I can tell you is this Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy that by the power of the Holy Spirit, your whole life and outlook may be radiant with hope. So when we have the Holy Spirit, our outlook may be radiant with hope. And that's what we need. We need something to hope in. Revelation 21.4 says that someday in heaven, for believers, it will be a place of no fear, of no pain of no sorrow, no suffering, no grief, no anger, no resentment, no victims. I am looking forward to that. I invite you to invite Jesus Christ into your life, not because you're going to die tonight. Chances are you're not going to die tonight, but because you're going to live tomorrow. Now, between today and the time you do die, there's going to be a lot of tragedies that come about in your life. And the question is, what are you going to have to hold on to when the next tragedy comes? What's going to motivate you to get up, get out of bed, get dressed, and face the day in the middle of a major crisis? What's going to give you hope? You tuned in this morning scared of what the new normal is going to look like. And I want to say to you that God's aware of the frustration and God's aware of the hurt and the anger and the resentment and the fear and the depression and maybe the guilt. And he says, I want to help you out. So here's what he says. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And so if we turn to him... We'll make it through the pain. 
unashamedly, I stand up here and I tell you that there are strings attached to this covenant. That this covenant is only meant for those that are members of his family. And you become a member of his family by being baptized into the, what, we, what preachers used to call the watery grave of baptism. Where you die to yourself and you live for him. And you are adopted into the family of God with all the privileges that you get by being in the family. I had somebody last week, uh, I mentioned, uh, I had a mention, mentioned about toilet paper that, uh, uh, that um, you know, that if you, if you have, and they said to me, are you telling me that if I become a Christian, I can find toilet paper uh, out there? And, and I said to them, you know, I, I'm, I'm saying if you're a Christian, I can probably get you a roll or two uh, out of that. So read into that what you want. There are privileges to family. I invite you to join the family of God, invite you to join the family of Westbury and be a part of us. Someday we'll get back in here. And someday we'll enjoy the fellowship and we can connect physically as well as spiritually. And I'm looking forward to that. And I hope you are too. Right now the invitation is yours. As I mentioned last week, you don't have to come down and be baptized in our baptistry here. Fill up your bathtub. If you live in an apartment complex, go get in the pool. What's important is that you give your life, you're baptized into Jesus Christ. What's important is that you're restored. What's important is that you write down and send an email to the church, uh, to Westbury, and say, I want to be, in, be a part of this place because here I can find hope. That decision's yours. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb, of God I come, I come, just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blood to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot O Lamb of God I come I come I come broken to be mended I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I'm welcomed with open arms, praise God, just as I am. I come broken to be mended, I come wounded to be healed, I come desperate to be rescued, I come empty to be filled, I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb, and I'm welcomed with open arms, praise God, just as I am, praise God, just as I am. We again want to thank each of you for watching our service online. Uh, we ask that you continue to regularly check our website for updates and information that pertains to things that you need to know about 
Westbury, about the family, about uh, prayer requests, uh, anything like that, uh, please continue to refer that through the church office, or you may call any of the elders and we will address those issues uh, individually. Uh, as David mentioned, with the uh, order issued to stay at home, uh, we just want you to know that Westbury plans to support that order and we plan to continue our online services and, uh, for the foreseeable future. And additionally, uh, just a reminder that all of our in-person services and activities are canceled until that order is lifted or until things change. Uh, and again, please refer to the website for that information. As David mentioned, um, we thank you for your continued support of the work here at Westbury. Uh, it's, it's a little bit strange not, not being here and not actually doing things in a hands-on manner like we typically do, but we thank you so much for your support and we ask that you continue that through e-giving uh, and, and carry that on uh, for the future. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the day that you've given us. We are so thankful for, uh, for this time that we can spend together to study your word and, and to sing praises. Father, uh, it is, we're outside of, of the comfort zone that we have of meeting together, of being within uh, the four walls of this building that we are so accustomed to. And Father, we just ask that, that you be with each of us in our homes, in our, in the, in our living places. And, and Father, just, just keep us safe and know that your hand is on us, you are guiding us, you are giving us strength, the strength that we need to carry on each day. Father, bless us now through uh, the remainder of our service. Uh, we ask it in your son's precious name. Amen. Before we dismiss this morning, we wanted to give those uh, who are going to take communion uh, at home uh, an opportunity to have a thought, uh, something in your mind as you take. So I want to read for just a moment, from John chapter 6, starting in verse 53 through verse 57. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true, flu true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he will also live because of me. Through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have life. No matter what, what is going on around us, the things that we see, we have life through him. So if you will, let's say a prayer, uh, and then we will sing a song, and then we will be dismissed. Father, for those who are going to take here uh, and at home the bread and the cup that represent the sacrifice, uh, the broken body, and the blood that was shed on the cross for our sins, Father. Uh, we ask that you bless those uh, wherever they are and wherever they are in this city or state or country or world as they're tuning in, Father. We ask that you uh, watch, help them and uh, let them partake in a way that pleases you. Uh, and uh, even as we are living our lives in shelter, Father, help us to live in a way that glorifies you and that is uplifting uh, to our families, and that uh, is able to uh, help end the situation that we're in as quickly as possible, Father. And for those who are going to give, we ask that you help them to do that cheerfully as well. We ask all of that in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, so if you will, let's go ahead and sing one more song, and then we will dismiss our service this morning. 
I believe in the Son. I believe in the risen one. I believe I overcome by the power of his blood. Amen. Amen. I'm alive. I'm alive because he lives. Amen. Amen. Let my song join the one that never ends because he lives. I was dead in the grave. I was covered in sin and shame. I heard mercy call my name. He rolled the stone away. Amen. Amen. I'm alive. I'm alive because he lives. Amen. Amen. Let my song join the one that never ends. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, every fear is gone. I know he holds my life my future in his hands. Amen. Amen. I'm alive. I'm alive because he lives. Amen. Amen. Let my song join the one that never ends. Amen. Amen. I'm alive, I'm alive because he lives. Amen, amen. Let my song join the one that never ends because he lives. Because he lives. Amen. Have a blessed week.